Good morning. We're going to start with the choir singing I Wander With Me. It's a song written by Swami Kriyananda, inspired by the life of St. Francis. Rays of the One Light, Weekly Commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. This is week 50, Living in the Presence of God. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25, we read of a king capitalized for the references to God, who welcomed certain devotees to the divine consciousness, saying, I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. The elect asked him when it was they had served him in these ways. And the king answered, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. To see God as residing in every human being, as indeed he does, is to open oneself to limitless opportunities for serving him. Paramahansa Yogananda, in Autobiography of a Yogi, described a saint who lived in this consciousness as the greatest man of humility I ever knew. He described a seemingly chance encounter with this saint. Another day found me walking alone near the Haura Railroad Station. I stood for a moment by a temple, silently criticizing a small group of men with drum and cymbals who were violently reciting a chant. How undevotionally they use the Lord's divine name in mechanical repetition, I reflected. My gaze was astonished by the rapid approach of Master Mahasaya. Sir, how come you here? The saint, ignoring my question, answered my thought. Isn't it true, little sir, that the beloved's name sounds sweet from all lips, ignorant and wise? He passed his arm around me affectionately, I found myself carried on his magic carpet to the merciful presence. If you would see God, watch for him everywhere. If you would hear his voice, listen for it in all sounds, and also in their supporting silences. If you would know God, seek his wisdom behind merely human knowledge. 
The Bhagavad Gita in the sixth chapter states, one who beholds my presence everywhere and all things dwelling equally in me, he never loses loving sight of me, nor I of him through all eternity. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Om, Om, Om. Good morning. My name is David, and it is my honor and privilege to be presenting Sunday service along with Surendra and Lorna and Hanuman. So I'd like to begin with a reading from Whispers from Eternity by Paramahansa Yogananda. O oh, Father, may I behold thee above, beneath, behind, around, wherever I turn my gaze. Train the children of my senses never to stray from thee, who dwellest at the heart of everything. Turn my eyes inward to thy changeless beauty. Attune my ears to silence, that I may hear thy subtlest music. Breathe on me the heavenly scent of thy sacred presence. Orient-wise, I will worship thee, placing the candles of my five senses on the altar of my love. Thus, I will contact thee in the first pale shafts of dawn, absorb thee in the bright light of noon, expand in thee with a hidden glow of twilight, and merge in thee in the silver moonlight. Always will I keep a light on my inner altar, the mystic taper of my love for thee. So, um, judging from the reading that Evelyn read, music critics will probably never make it to enlightenment. <laughs> but maybe there's hope for elementary music teachers <laughs> who have to listen. And, and it's a special gift. Uh, people often ask me, how do you put up with all the, 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 you know, they're trying to play the right notes and it's just like, no, no, no. And I have some friends who literally, they just, they, they twitch when they hear something that's, that's out of tune. They cannot be uh, in it. But for me, it's just like, oh, listen to this beautiful music these, <laughs> these hearts are creating. So it's, it's definitely a gift to have, um, to be able to listen for the joy within the imperfections. Uh, so I will continue now with a brief story from India. In ancient India, there lived a king, and his desire for glory was so great that he planned to build a new temple to Shiva that would outrival any in the land. He summoned his royal architects, and they began work. The quarrymen began cutting the stones. The masons began laying the foundation. And among all of these could be seen an old woman with a pail of milk. For you see, this woman was a great devotee of Shiva, and when she heard of the plans to build a temple to her beloved Lord, she was thrilled and she wanted to help. She turned to her old companion, a milk cow, and said, I'm too weak to carry any stones. I cannot sculpt. I can't paint. Ah, but I do have you, my dear friend. 
Perhaps we can be of some service. So she brought her old pail and her stool, said a prayer to Shiva, and began to milk. And as each drop fell into the bucket, she thought more and more of her beloved Lord. She was so engrossed in the thought of Shiva that when the pail was full, she picked it up and didn't even notice how heavy it was and carried it to the work site. And there, she did not see the sweaty, dirty body, but instead beheld the beloved Shiva embodied in each of the workers. When the pail was empty, she returned home, where she saw her cow looking at her in a meaningful way. Do you mean to say, old friend, that you have some more milk in you? <laughs> and so she dove deeper and deeper in service, bucket after bucket, day after day, month after month, year after year, until at last the temple was finished. It was a glorious day for the king. As he strode down the avenue towards the temple, he gazed at the temple that he had built for Shiva. The Brahmins came in, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, followed by the architects, the quarrymen, the masons, the sculptors, everyone who had a part to play in the building of this grand temple. And so the festivities began, but then all of a sudden, uh, there was a flash of light and there before them stood Shiva himself. The king was very proud of this fact. And so he stood up and said, Shiva, welcome to your temple. And Shiva only glanced at him and said, bring me the one who has built this temple. And so the king presented himself and said, I, it is I, Lord, who have built this temple for you. And again, he glanced at him and said, bring me the one who has built this temple. The king was a little puzzled. Uh, perhaps he's thinking metaphorically, bring the architects, summon the royal architects, quick, 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 quick. Shiva, may I present the royal architects? And again, bring me the one who has built this temple. So he brought forth the quarrymen, the sculptors, the painters, everyone who had worked on this temple. But still Shiva replied, bring me the one who has built this temple. Soon the sun was at its zenith, where the king, when the king realized that he had run out of every single worker that he had seen work on the temple. But way in the back, there was an old woman. Her eyes were upturned in bliss. Who is that? Where would she be? Well, I don't know. Who cares? Bring her forward. Bring her forward. Um, Lord Shiva, may I present this woman who... What did you do? I gave milk to the workers. And finally, Shiva fell silent. He reached out his hand and picked her up. And they began to rise into the air. It was your love that has built this temple, that has infused every stone, every sculpture. It is not these mere workers who have built, 
but is your devotion. And I cannot remain far away from a love such as yours. were only so easy. When I first read the, the scripture passage, it reminded me of how guilty I felt uh, listening to my dad preach in the Presbyterian church when we came to this, uh, this reading, and it just seemed to ask for more and more and more. And I looked at my life, and I wasn't serving the poor. I wasn't going to jails and serving people. I wasn't feeding anyone. I wasn't putting clothes on anyone's back at that point. And it just made me feel like, what can I do? I, I, I don't have this sight. I don't have the ability to see God in other people. And I just thought it was some magical x-ray um, rose-colored glasses, perhaps, that, that you had to have. But what I've come to learn is that it's not so much magical sight, because not many of us have that. But we all have something within us, and that's the heart. And just as Yogananda in the Whispers talks about the five sentences, sorry, the five senses of turning the gaze inward to see God, because truly we can't see God in others until we see God in ourselves. And for me, that was the turning point. When I started realizing that I could feel God's presence within me, then I was able to feel God's presence in others, in music, in friends, in family. And I want to share with you, as I often do, the secrets of sympathetic resonance, sympathetic vibration. It's a harmonic phenomenon uh, wherein a string will start to vibrate when its note is being produced elsewhere. So on my cello, um, I have a D string here. And when I play it, a D on a lower string, um, you can hear those strings come alive. It's not through a mechanism. Uh, and if we had a, a real piano here, you could uh, hold down the sustain pedal and sing into it and you hear your voice reflected. I'm gonna try um, doing that real quick. I've never done this before, so bear with me. Uh, um, uh, can you hear it barely? Uh, there it is. It's very faint, so you need a microphone to do it. But it's this law, this natural law, where when something is attuned, and Yogananda uses that to tune, attune my ears to thy silence. When I play, I have to make sure all my strings are in tune. I have to make sure that my fingers are all in the right places for the music to be beautiful or for this sympathetic uh, resonance to work. And I also have to make sure that these strings are not dampened. So if I play those notes, but if I put place my fingers lightly on the strings to deaden them, they're not going to vibrate. So one of the first things that we have to do to feel and to see God's presence everywhere is to remove the dampers which keep our hearts from resonating. So those resonatings are criticism, just like in, the, in, in, in there. You cannot feel joy and criticize at the same time. In fact, you cannot even be creative and criticize at the same time. That's why so many people have a, a difficult time um, expressing artistically because they're always judging what they're doing. Does anybody else have that problem? Like for, for me, like I can't draw because I'm like, no, no, that's no good, that's no good. Uh, uh, so I just give up because I just don't think I can draw. And uh, it's such a conundrum in classical music because we're trained to look for that which can be improved. But unfortunately, we look at that which can, can be improved and we say that's bad and we start getting caught up in it and then we start looking at other people and seeing what could be improved in them because we think we're really practicing well when we do that. But little do we know that we're boxing ourselves in and dampening ourselves uh, from the joy that is there. So as we enter into this holy season, one of the greatest things you can do is use the music that is around you. 
use the the vibrations, for instance, from last night's concert to open your heart, to tangibly feel something. And, and the word tangibly is the most important thing because there is nothing truer than what you feel. Um, I often had this problem as well of not knowing how to pray to God until I realized that it's not something out there, it's something in me. And so when we use words like, wow, that really resonates with me, that struck a deep chord, I, I resonate with that, or it, um, I'm in tune with that, we're feeling some energy come alive inside of us. And for me, I think of that as a string. And the cool thing is that this cello string is about the length of my spine. So I imagine uh, these cello strings inside of me. And the biggest one is the God string, so I, and which God put there. So I've got a, a cello string inside me that if I allow it to resonate, that brings me closer and more in tune to God. So, but the first thing I have to do is take my grubby little hands off of it that keep it from, uh, from resonating. And a lot of that, again, is the constrictive thinking, whether it's criticism, whether it's frustration, whether it's irritation, and just take a breath and practice again listening. Um, but I also realized that I can pray to the masters this way as well. I can have individual strings for each of the masters. And when I, I pray to them, I can think of um, each of them at residing as strings, each of them, their distinct vibrations um, ready to resonate within me. And for instance, um, engrossed is the bee of my mind. I had no idea what to do with that chant because I'm like, I don't see a bee. I don't see feet. What I, I don't get it. What am I supposed to do here? But what the chant is symbolizing is the consciousness. When your awareness becomes so engrossed, and I hope you can come to the eight-hour meditation, because I guarantee you, if you spend that much time in meditation, something good is bound to happen. And what I hope is that you fall into this state where you finally enter into that place where time doesn't matter. At first, it can be like, oh my gosh, that's only an hour and a half and I have six and a half more to go. Why am I going to make it through? But at some point, then you can relax and enter into that timeless moment where you don't really care what time it is. And you, all you're feeling is that presence. So that's the engrossed part. But in our culture, we don't have the foot worship, the foot, the, you know, the laying, the bowing down and the, the touching of the feet. Um, but for me, I've been realizing that perhaps the feet are within me. Perhaps the starting point from where I can approach Divine Mother is from my own heart, from my own um, resonance. So um, as I enter into this, this holy season, my job is to resonate as completely as possible, to catch myself, and that's the trick, of the times when I enter into that uh, time of criticism where I might think, oh, that's not quite the right place or the, the right time or the right note or the right inflection, but instead be listening for the heart. And it just takes a moment. And don't beat yourself up either. So that's another thing that classical musicians do very well is beat themselves up. Because, and they often they kind of brag about it. And it's amazing how young they pick up on this. It's that, that, that false modesty, um, that insecurity begs to have. It's like, oh, no, that wasn't very good, um, versus which is very different from, well, I could have gone better, but there it is. <laughs> so as I go into this, that is my goal, is to keep my heart open to keep myself resonating with that constant presence, that constant exposure of my inner strings to others. Can I feel love in the midst of a crowd? Can I go into my fourth grade cello class and feel peace in the midst of chaos? Can I offer them some love in the, in the, the midst of their stress? And so we all have this ability to serve others. Some of us may be fortunate enough to do it outright, uh, serving people in jail, feeding the hungry, clothing those who need it. 
and yet others may have their lives a little bit more removed. But it really doesn't matter because the vibration is the key. If you can even seclude for this next month, let's just say that as an extreme example, and just by your vibration, you are uplifting everyone. As you attune yourself to a higher and higher vibration, closer and closer to God, that radiates out and can be tangibly felt. So I'm going to next move on to our next piece of music, which is the Shawl of Gold, which is an, a uh, beautiful story of what can happen when this attitude of service is done sincerely and genuinely. A poor little girl walking in the cold Her clothing all tattered and thin Spied a rich man standing outside a church Outside a church, oh outside a church Spied a rich man standing outside a church The service about to begin Please, sir, she said, hear an orphan child The cold winds of winter have come I've no place to live, not in all May find work in some home. The rich man frowned, don't you hear that him? Good people have gathered in prayer. It's a day for worship. Impious girl, impious girl, oh impious girl, it's a day for worship, impious girl, don't speak here of earthly affairs. He turned then and entered the holy church. The girl wandered down the cold street And there all at once She beheld a small boy No jacket, no shoes for his feet His clothing was shabby as worn as her own And he shivered against a closed door Alas, he cried, none will take me in Take me in, none will take me in Alas, he cried None will take me in, for I'm starving and cold, for I'm poor. Seeing him, she cried, how I feel for you. It's bitter with no friends to live. Here, please take my shawl, it's all I can spare. Shameful, so little to give. She wrapped him all up in the flimsy cloth and kissed his cold forehead and smiled. 
Suddenly a warmth like a summer breeze Summer breeze like a summer breeze Suddenly a warmth like a summer breeze Encircled this poor girl and child And a tender voice said, My daughter, I'm here No more shall you weep without friends For in yonder church There's no love like yours Those with pure hearts, their needs I attend. My child, all men's sorrows would turn to joy If they knew that to share is no loss For it's Kindness broadens the human heart, human heart, the human heart, for its kindness broadens the human heart. I know I who died on the cross, worship me but love and my love you found by your gift to me here in the cold and she found their clothes were now woolen and warm and the shawl was now spun of fine gold We had a wonderful concert last night, and um, thank you all for joining us, if you are able to. But there's more Christmas coming, and right after service today, we have healing prayers, and so all are welcome to join in um, for that, if you'd like. Um, we'll, after we go out with joy, we ring the little bell, and you're welcome to come back in and participate in praying for others. Then the, um, David mentioned the eight-hour meditations. This is a tradition here at Ananda that was started by Yogananda, and um, the first one is on the 21st. The traditional one is on the 23rd, but then we always offer an alternate date. And so we have an eight-hour meditation both on the 21st, which is Saturday, and the 23rd, which is Monday. So you're welcome to come to either or both for all the eight hours or part, for the beginning, for the end, whichever we would like to. It's an opportunity to, as David said, to just try to put time aside and dive deep into the Christ consciousness, to the inner Christmas inside. And it's broken up. If you haven't done an eight hour before, don't let it intimidate you too much. We have chanting, we have readings, we have music that we play, we have breaks, and um, it's, it's very manageable, much more so than you, than you might know. And um, it's a lovely way to balance all of the social time of Christmas with the, with the inner communion inside. If you have any questions, let us know. And is there anything else? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a few more things. Uh, also, you know, uh, after the uh, service this morning, uh, back up just a little bit. Last night, as I'm sure most of you know, we had a magnificent concert. And uh, at the conclusion of that, we had a cookie satsang. And we have cookies remaining. <laughs> So please join us in Clarity Room for refreshments and, uh, and an opportunity to, to visit with each other. We also have our dear friends from uh, Camino Farm here with us today, and they have a 
wonderful setup of their farm products in the first classroom as you come in the front door, the inspiration room. Uh, you'll know where it is by the lavender smell as you get close to it. It's, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, we have our own boutique as well, so by all means do, do browse and enjoy all that's available after Sunday service, and then we'll ring the bell for the healing prayers, the healing prayer circle afterwards. Also, just to let you know ahead of time too, Next Sunday, we'll be having our Christmas service here, uh, and that is uh, followed by uh, a very festive potluck right here. Um, you are welcome. Everyone is welcome. Bring whatever you like that is your favorite dish. And yeah, vegetarian. Uh, and uh, we look forward to spending this wonderful holiday season with all of you. Thank you. And thank you, David, for absolutely a wonderful concert last night and uh, talk today.